girls. Hi. I'm glad you came by the church. Doesn't it look different? Yeah. It kind of makes me sad. Even as a minister, it makes me sad. Because what time of year is it? Christmas time! Yeah, I know. This has been a tough year all around. There's this problem with the pandemic, right? I mean, look at us with our masks on. Did you ever think you'd be in church with a mask? Did you ever think I'd be wearing a mask? Doesn't stop me from talking, though. Okay? Well, I know. It's just not the same. What do you, what do you notice different here in the church? There's no wreath. There's no wreath! There's usually big wreaths up there and all over on the windows and on the front door, right? And what about on the table? What's the name of that wreath? Do you remember the season? The Advent wreath, right? Mm -hmm. And what about those candles? Do you remember what I do with those candles? Yeah, we light them one at a time. Michaela, what are the candles? Oh. Hope, joy, love, and peace. Love and peace, yeah. But even they look naked, don't they? Without the wreaths? I know. Well, these are all the things we've had to do to try to stay safe and well. But it, we're doing them, but we don't like it, really. No, I don't like it either. But, but I want everybody to stay well. But you know what doesn't change every year? The story about Jesus. Right? So what's Christmas about? What are we celebrating at Christmas? Jesus' birth. Jesus' birth. His birthday. I don't know why they just don't call it Jesus' birthday. Right? When you got it, well, especially with Michaela, when you were real little, we used to have a birthday cake for Jesus on Christmas Eve. Yeah, we can't do that either. But Well, the thing about the world that we live in is things are going to change all the time. You guys are growing up on me. Michaela told me she's in 10th grade. I can't believe it. Okay? But change. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And what do you think this is? It's a Bible. It's a real old Bible that was in Bud's family. It was Bud's grandfather's. And it's pretty old. It's probably 150 or more. The stories in here never change. And they never stop being relevant to our lives today. The circumstances, the clothes, a lot of things might be different. But the meaning of the story in the Bible, of what God does with God's people, his creations, that never changes. And that's why Jesus' birth is so important. Because because Jesus was born, what happened after he was born? He grew up, right? Uh-huh. And then he was a minister and he traveled around. Do you know some of the things he did? Special word for that. Miracles, right? He healed people. He even raised people from the dead. But then he died. He died a terrible death on the cross. Right? But what happened then? Did he stay dead? What happened? He rose again. And that holiday is Easter. Right? So you know what? Because God's story with God's people never changes, how about we read that story together, okay? Okay. okay. All right. I see Bud coming. I think he wants to read it to you. Is that okay, girls? Yeah. Okay. Ladies, for to us a child is born. 
The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of power. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Birth of John the Baptist foretold. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. 
When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedience to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah, wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me in my old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail.
The Birth of Jesus Foretold In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Mary, did you know your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know your baby boy will calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you've kissed your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live.
Mary visits Elizabeth. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. The Birth of Jesus In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. They stopped at an inn and were told there were no room. So they went to the stable. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Silent night, holy night, holy
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told.
you then, girl? Does it feel any more like Christmas? A little? Okay. This year has been a really hard year for all of us, especially our young people, all the changes they've had to go through, and for some of us old people as well. Even as a minister of the gospel, it's a very different experience sharing God's word in new and different ways. Some of them are a lot of fun and good, and some, quite honestly, are a lot of work. But we're very blessed here in White Sulphur Springs to have some very talented people, Roger Linker and Kathy Johansson, that have helped us come along in technology. I told the girls earlier that the Christmas story never changes. God's intervention into the world. Jesus, a man in the flesh, born of a virgin, coming into a sin-sick and broken world to start to build God's kingdom. As disciples of Christ, as people of the church, we benefit from that story, and there are many stories that happened before that of God's intervention. There are a lot of times when people have been less than faithful, and yet God, in his love, compassion, and mercy, continues to bless us, heal us, forgive us, reconcile us back to him for the building of the kingdom. This has been a year where we've really had to rely on God and God's gifts of grace. So I pray you hear this Christmas story again this year, that you take the time that you have been given, freed from the other traditions that we've all participated in, and take a little bit more time to thank God for the gift of Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. So I think we have to say Merry Christmas to everybody, okay? Nice and loud. Ready? Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. Merry Christmas! Cool. Woo! Joy!